If you've been looking for an alternative to Adobe Photoshop Lightroom, uh, you guys are in the right place. I want to talk to you guys today about a few of the best Lightroom alternatives. I'm testing out four of them today against each other. Hello there, my name is Austin James Jackson. I'm a landscape photographer based here in Southern Utah. In today's video, we're going to be comparing and contrasting Luminar Neo On One Photo Raw Capture One and DxO Photo Lab 6. Now, all four of these softwares are very, very nice for photo editing. They're generally considered the four best Lightroom alternatives. I want to talk to you guys about the differences between them and so that you can decide which one is right for you if you're looking for something that is not Lightroom. Now, in this video, we are going to be talking about five main components in each of these softwares. The first one being price, the second one being the speed of the software, the third one being the layout, the fourth one being the if there's any layers or masking features, and the fifth one being if there's any like effects or plugins that come with the software. Now, there's of course a million different things you could talk about, but these, in my opinion, are the five most important things when you're looking for a Lightroom alternative because you want to be able to edit really nice photos really easily. So that's why I'm talking about these five things. Alrighty, guys, so without further ado, let's go ahead and jump in there. We're going to talk about the price differences first. First. Now, the most expensive of all of our softwares is going to be DxO Photo Lab 6. This is going to run you a one time cost. It's $219 that gets you the software uh, and any updates that are made with that software. But if a newer version comes out, you have to repurchase the newer version. This might be at a discounted rate, but still, you are forking that cost out up front. There's no subscription option or monthly option. Uh, you simply just have to pay for the lifetime cost and then you own the software. Now the next most expensive is Capture One, and this is going to run you $179 a year if you want to do the subscription option, or if you want to buy it just once and be done with it, it's $299 for lifetime, that'll get you access to the software. Next we've got Luminar Neo, which comes in at $89 a year or $109 lifetime, meaning you pay $109, software is yours, you don't have to pay uh, any more upgrade fees. This is obviously quite a bit cheaper, um, and this goes hand in hand with On One Photo Raw, which comes in also at $89 a year, or you can buy it outright for $100 or $99.99. Um, so all of these softwares are pretty competitively priced. So DxO and Capture One are obviously a little bit more expensive, whereas you've got On One and Luminar Neo that are a little bit cheaper. So we're gonna be diving into a few more spec that I think are really important when you talk about these softwares. Next thing I want to talk about is the speed of the programs. Now this is really important because no one likes to edit with some slow editing software and of course depending on what kind of computer you have um, the speed may be faster or slower but I'm simply testing all of these on the same computer with the same specs so I can see kind of which one runs faster so if you do have a slower machine you may want to avoid some of the slower programs. Now the one piece of software that ran significantly slower than anything else was Capture One and one way that I tell that it runs slower slowly is that A, the photos are rendering or loading very slowly, and B, the thing that I think is the most frustrating is when you are adjusting the sliders on your photo, like say you're bringing the exposure up or the shadows up, you have to slide the slider, release it, and then it takes a second to load the adjustment that you just made. Uh, if you've been photo editing for long, you know that this is super, super annoying. It's really hard to edit like this because it just takes so long. It's so much nicer when you're using a software where you slide the slider and it instantly happens as you slide it back and forth so you can perfectly dial it in. The other three softwares all worked perfectly well when you were sliding the sliders. They almost instantly happen. On one had an ever so slight delay, a little bit more than the other two softwares, but it wasn't too terribly bad. But definitely Capture One was by far the slowest of these softwares that I tested. So let's talk about layers and masking. For a lot of you guys, especially if you are landscape or nature photographers like I am, um, layers and masking are so incredibly important. You're using it on like all of your photos. Now within Capture One, it allows for both layers as well as luminosity and color range masking. Uh, there's some very advanced masking tools in Capture One that are really nice to use. However, they weren't super easy to use. And even as a professional and someone that edits all the time, it took me a little bit of time to figure out how to use them. Um, and I'm still not 100% percent on using them super easily. So it's, it's something that if you want to invest some time, I think there's some really, really great features, but it's not going to be something that you are going to purchase today and be an expert with tomorrow. 
So for that reason, I wasn't a huge fan of the layers and masking in Capture One. Now DxO Photo Lab uh, does not support layers, but they do have luminosity and color range masking. So this is great if you want to mask things, but you can't do layers, which is really frustrating because there's a lot of things that you may want to use layers for. Um, and there's some workarounds for things like focus stacking and stuff like that, but the um, Photo Lab 6 does not have the ability to allow you to do layers. Now Luminar Neo supports layers, but it does not have any kind of luminosity or color range masking. However, they do have their brand new mask AI tool, which allows you to go in and the AI will automatically determine like where the mountains and the sky and stuff like that are. So you can easily select to create a layer mask. This is nice, it doesn't work perfectly, but it works pretty well. Um, but obviously there's nothing like creating a luminosity mask. There's no way to do anything like that in Luminar Neo. So for that reason, uh, Luminar Neo was not my favorite just because it's really difficult if you can't use a luminosity or a color range mask to make adjustments to your landscape photography. Now On1 also has an AI powered uh, masking tool. It's actually a brush and On1 does support both luminosity and color range masking that works pretty well. I really liked the masking tools in On1. They were really easy to use. Um, and so for that reason, I think that On1 really wins the uh, luminosity masking, color range masking, layers. It's got all of it. I really like On1 for layers and layer masking. Now let's talk about some effects and plugins. Capture One doesn't really have anything like this that's going to help you guys edit your photos. They do have like preset effects that honestly didn't work very well in my opinion. They're nothing special. They're just like your standard uh, Lightroom preset was kind of what I compared them to. So unfortunately Capture One doesn't have any cool little effects that can spruce up your photos in a hurry. Now DxO Photo Lab 6 was also pretty much the same thing. Um, DxO Photo Lab does work with the Nick Collection which is also a DxO product, but you need to purchase this uh, in addition to Photolab in order to use it. If you do purchase the Nick collection, there's tons of great effects, but that's gonna cost you another $149, so it gets quite expensive to add those effects. Now Luminar Neo has tons of great effect sliders and you can really easily make your photo look awesome in just a matter of minutes using Luminar Neo uh, with very little to no prior experience just by sliding a few sliders around. You can do things like create sun rays and add mood by adding glow. You can relight the scene using some AI technology. There's literally just tons and tons of different sliders you can use in Luminar Neo that work really, really well. I love all these effects for editing my photos. Usually I'll go through and adjust some sliders to edit my photo and then I'll go in afterwards and I will do some of those effects to really kind of bring my photo home and kind of add a little uh, nice touch onto the end of the photo. So I really like the effects that are offered in Luminar Neo. Now On1 also has some cool effects. They actually have 31 different effects that you can add in there. On1 effects, which is considered a plugin, but it is integrated within On1 2023. Uh, they're really nice. There's some effects that are better than others, obviously, um, but you can do pretty much anything that you would want to do in these effects. And of course, combine this with layers and layer masking, and you've got a really powerful tool there in On1 using their On1 effects. Okay, so let's talk about the layout next. Now, Capture One and DxO, I think, have really, really similar layouts. Um, they're both very advanced. There's tons and tons and tons of tools. You can pretty much do anything that you would need to do. But for me personally, I think it's a little overkill. Now, if you are a photographer that really wants to do things the technical way, get all the technicalities, be able to do literally anything to your photo, these two softwares might be for you because of course there's more tools. But if you're someone who maybe you're newer or you don't wanna deal with all the clutter and that's the reason why you don't wanna use Lightroom and Photoshop anyways, you probably want to avoid those two softwares. Both are like very modern and advanced. Um, and there's just so much on the screen at once that it's hard to know exactly where to go when you want to do something to your photo. Now, on the other hand, I think Luminar Neo probably has the easiest layout to navigate. It's super, super simple. You've got just a couple tabs at the top and you've got all your edits on the right, your layers on the left. It's really, really easy to use. I think Luminar Neo is super easy for a beginner to create really, really nice edits from in a hurry. 
Now on one also has a pretty nice layout that's pretty easy to navigate. I kind of look at this as a bridge between Luminar and Capture One slash DxO, um, just because on one is a little bit more advanced, but the layout is still very, very simple. It's very obvious where you need to go to create certain edits. Uh, and it does obviously have, like I said earlier, a few more tools than Luminar Neo. So I really like the layout of on one as well. There's just a few more things than there is in Luminar Neo. Um, and the layout is also very clean, very simple, easy to follow along with. So let's go over the final thoughts for each software. Now we're gonna start with Capture One. I think this software is really advanced. There's lots of really cool things you can do, um, but honestly, don't be, um, I guess, overexcited by all these features because it adds a lot of clutter. Now, if you're a photographer, you're very advanced, you're a professional, you're ready to move on from Lightroom and Photoshop, and you want a new software that's gonna have all the tools and more, Capture One is a great choice for you because there is just so much to do, but it has a pretty steep learning curve. It's not going to be something that you're going to pick up and you're going to have great success with overnight. You're going to have to use it for a while. So if you want to get Capture One, I would consider uh, making sure that you want to switch because if you purchase this software, like I said, you're not going to learn it overnight. It's going to take months and months for you to learn. Um, but otherwise, the software has tons of great features. It's got nice tools. It's lacking some effects though. So you don't have a nice easy way to spruce up your photos. You're going to have to create those like effects yourself for whatever you want to do. Now I feel pretty much the same about Capture One as I do about DxO. So DxO Photo Lab 6 is also a very advanced program. There's lots of advanced things you can do in there. Again, I would purchase this if you're an advanced photographer that wants to spend a lot of time learning and you wanna have a lot of power at your fingertips. And to be honest, if you are trying to decide between Photo Lab 6 and Capture One, I would simply just download the trial for both, see which one you like better, see which layout you like better. They're both very, very similar. Now the one benefit that Capture One has over DxO is that in Capture One, you can actually import Lightroom catalogs. So if you're switching from Lightroom, you can bring your catalogs straight over, which you can't do in DxO. So for that reason, I might recommend Capture One unless you just can't stand the layout and then you can try DxO. Now let's also talk about Luminar Neo. Now I don't see a lot of photographers that would like Luminar Neo or On One that are going to like Capture One and DxO and vice versa. So put yourself in the category, figure out if you want the more advanced editing software or one of the more simple editing softwares, um, and then go from there and make your decision. So let's talk about Luminar Neo. There's tons of great effects. I love a lot of these effects. They're really, really cool. And Luminar Neo is probably the best editing software if you wanna create really easy edits really quickly. Um, and there is of course some more advanced tools that you can use there in Luminar Neo, but it is generally more of a basic program um, with some really cool sliders that allow for quick and easy edits. Luminar Neo is a great place to start as is on one if you're first beginning to edit your photos and you'll create some really great photos in either. Now on one is gonna give you a few more features and a little bit more hands-on control than Luminar Neo. Um, and the layout is really nice. There's some cool effects as well as some really, really great plugins that come with on one uh, uh, in the 2023 version. You can purchase these plugins to go um, with any other software, but obviously that's more money that you probably don't wanna spend. So for that reason, I would decide if you want on one, if you want Luminar, both are very, very good. It ultimately just comes down to, are you looking for some really cool effects sliders that are gonna give you some really easy and quick edits that are gonna be really cool? Go with Luminar Neo. If you want a little bit more control and you want those tools at your fingertips to be able to make adjustments uh, and almost like a crossover between Lightroom and Photoshop, you're gonna to wanna to go with on one. All right guys, well, so many options here. Hopefully this helps you guys to figure out which software is gonna work best for you. Uh, I know there's a lot of talk and a lot of different photographers using different stuff out there. Hopefully this helps so that you can nail down exactly what you wanna use um, for editing your photos. I wanna thank you guys so much for checking out this weekend's video. And as always, I'm posting a video every single weekend. Please make sure to like and subscribe so that you can see them. My goal is to help make you a better photographer. Thank you guys so much for checking out this week's video. We'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.